For people living in barren landscapes, oases have been a glorious sight to see. Oases are stunning patches of life within an otherwise inhospitable environment, and today we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most beautiful oases on Earth. Number 15. Lençóis Maranhenses National Park, Brazil Set within the Maranhão state of northeastern Brazil is the 380,000-acre Lençóis Maranhenses National Park. During the dry season, this is a place covered in rolling sand dunes, but during the rainy season, it transforms into an oasis as far as the eye can see. That's because the water that falls here becomes trapped in the depressions within the dunes, with nowhere to drain away too, and this creates a series of interconnected freshwater lagoons. As well as being incredible to look at, this phenomenon also sustains a rich ecosystem. Wolf fish, for example, swim around the lagoons when they're full, and will burrow deep into the sand into a wet layer of mud where they lay dormant during the dry period, before traveling back to the surface again once the rains return. Countless birds, insects, and even mammalian species also travel to the area when the lagoons are present. And it's become such a popular site that around 60,000 tourists visit it each year. Within the park, there are two gigantic permanent oases too, called Queimata do Britos and Baixa Grande, and each of these cover an area of between 2,100 and 2,700 acres to provide year-round sanctuary for animal and plant life. Number 14. Havasu Falls, Grand Canyon the Grand Canyon is one of the most spectacular natural formations anywhere on the planet, but while you may think of it as being vast, virtually a barren landscape, there are some areas that are the complete opposite. Within the Havasupai tribal lands around one and a half miles from Supai, there's a series of incredible waterfalls along a stream called Havasu Creek, and the most impressive of them are known as the Havasu Falls. Once consisting of multiple falls along a cliff face, the region is constantly changing, and after flooding in 1910, there's now just one main chute that pours over a 100-foot-tall cliff into a plunge pool. The water has high concentrations of calcium carbonate, which gives it a magical blue-green color, and over the centuries, it's been deposited and hardened to form some travertine dams that hold the water in little pools. It is possible to visit the falls if you obtain the required permissions from the Havasupai people, and for a small number that do, the falls are perfect for swimming in, and there's a couple of picnic tables there for hikers to take a break. Number 13. Wadi Bani Khalid, Oman Located around 126 miles from Muscat, the capital city of Oman, is Wadi Bani Khalid, which is one of the most famous wadis or wet valleys in the country. In what is typically an extremely dry region, this valley has a stream that runs through it year-round, and it's formed a series of large pools held back by boulders along its course. Evidence has been found of ancient Bedouin tribes establishing themselves in the area to benefit from the water and vegetation source. And there's also a number of caves in the valley walls that offer a cool respite from the outside, where the walls are covered with cave art. Nomadic people aren't so reliant on the wadi in modern times, but it's become a popular tourist attraction now, with the turquoise waters bubbling up from springs being a particular draw when contrasted by the desert landscape that surrounds it. In a sign of just how remote a place it is, and how it would have been such a welcome relief for travelers, are the eastern Hajar Mountains in the distance, a range that would have taken weeks to traverse by foot and have very few vital resources such as water or food readily available. Number 12. Gardaya Oasis, Algeria The Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert in the world, covering an area of 3.6 million square miles, and forms a large part of 10 different countries. This, of course, has impacted trade routes across Africa for a very long time, and ancient cultures took advantage of any sources of water and plant life to establish outposts within them. Almost a thousand years ago, members of the Ibadis kingdom, called the Mozabites, had been forced to flee a fire in their capital city and built five villages within the Wadi Mazab, which is a valley in what's now Algeria, with the largest being Gardaya. This was a much larger oasis than you'd normally think of, and the city continued to expand in the following years to now, where it covers an area of 230 square miles and has a population of around 95,000 people. 
It is a stunning place, which specializes in the manufacture of rugs and cloth. But with such a rich history, it's the architecture that's most impressive. At the center, for example, there's a pyramid-shaped mosque surrounded by beautiful houses, in a scene that French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir once described as being a cubist painting beautifully constructed. To support this growth, the Mozabites built a complex network of hydraulic tunnels to divert rainwater towards the oases, with a series of wells that are up to 500 feet deep, and they tap into a huge subterranean reservoir that was formed millions of years ago, and has an almost unending supply of water. Number 11. Natural Oasis of Busento, Italy the Busento River runs from the Cervati Mountains in Italy through the Salento region before entering the Tyrrhenian Sea, and along this route creates a stunning landscape, particularly as it passes the town of Morigerati. In fact, the network of gorges and caves that have formed in the valley has led it to being designated a protected region as a World Wildlife Fund oasis, and the more you see of it, the clearer it becomes why this decision was made. With vegetation and countless species of animals relying on the river's water, it's a picturesque place that you could explore for weeks on end. The cave entrance leads to a vast underground network, and there are parts where the river even travels completely beneath the surface before re-emerging several miles further along. Throughout history, the clear water and vibrant surroundings have been the inspiration for many artists and writers, with the earliest mentions of it dating back to the earliest period of the Roman Empire. Its status as a protected space means that it'll remain this way for generations to come, and if you're ever in the region, it's an absolute must-see. Number 10. Ein Gedi, Israel Translated to mean Spring of the Kid, Ein Gedi is an oasis that's in Israel to the west of the Dead Sea. Set within an arid landscape, it's where two spring-fed streams emerge from the ground and have formed a glorious series of pools and falls that you can either wade through or walk alongside. Most of the water that flows through is then diverted for agriculture or bottles for drinking, but the natural features have been preserved and are some of the most popular tourist attractions in the area, with as many as a million visitors per year. The wider area of the nature reserve that surrounds the central oasis is full of animal and plant life, and because of such a presence of water, it's a region that's been visited by people for hundreds if not thousands of years. There are a number of important archaeological sites dating as far back as the Neolithic Age, but also including relics from the Bronze and Iron Age, the Persian period around 2,500 years ago, and the times of the Romans and the Ottomans. Despite it having been there for so long, there are now concerns that the oasis may one day completely dry up. The wider area is experiencing drastic changes because of the falling levels of water in the Dead Sea, and around Ein Gedi, a large number of potholes have been opening up in recent years. The problem has become so severe that even a highway that was specifically built to be sinkhole-proof has been damaged by them, and there's now a continual presence by a team of scientists who are looking at how things are changing, and if there's any way to stop it. Number 9. Tafilalt, Morocco Located alongside the Ziz River, Tafilalt is the largest oasis in Morocco, and so important that the region around it was named after it too. Its name means jug, specifically a type of clay jug that was traditionally used to store water, and because of its lush environment, it's been an important part of Moroccan society for at least 2,000 years. Siljil Massa was the first Islamic town of note in the region, which was first established in the year 757, and it soon became the central hub for trade routes passing around the Sahara Desert. Gold mining in the area in the 17th century allowed the country's sultan to amass a large army, and this helped establish the royal family that still sits on the throne to this day. While Siljil Massa itself was destroyed during fighting in 1818 by the Ait Atta, the ruins can still be seen, and a number of other settlements were established in its place that took advantage of the oasis. It's the perfect example of how a desert oasis has impacted geopolitical developments throughout history, and how anyone in control of it had the ideal platform to control the rest of the country too. Rather than just being a refuge in inhospitable territory, Tafilalt has fueled armies and monarchies, and still holds an important place in Moroccan society. Number 8. Al Ula Oasis, Saudi Arabia for millennia, travelers crossing the Saudi Arabian desert have sought respite in the Al Ula Oasis, which is a vast, thriving region that's become a vital outpost for the various kingdoms that have controlled that area. It's there, for example, that the ancient city of Dadan was built, which was the capital city of the Dadan and Lihan kingdoms around 3,000 years ago. 
and then Hegra, the southern capital of the Nabataean Kingdom, which was built around 2,000 years ago and is now a major archaeological site. Even today, it's a stunning green oasis surrounded by arid desert that's a vital agricultural region. More than 2.3 million date palms are now grown in the fertile soil, which produce up to 100,000 tons of dates of various varieties each year. And it's the perfect place, too, for growing citrus trees, with 200,000 of them that cover 29 different varieties, such as oranges, sweet lemons, and kumquats, along with 90,000 Moringa peregrina trees, which are grown for the oils that's extracted from the seeds. The changing face of this oasis has meant that the region has been an economic powerhouse for generations, and with water scarcity becoming an ever-increasing problem in Saudi Arabia, the oasis will become increasingly important in the coming years. Number 7. Chebika Oasis, Tunisia Lying at the foot of the mountains of the Jebel El Negev in Tunisia, Chebika is an oasis in a valley that features waterfalls and lush vegetation, despite being in direct sunlight and having a name in Arabic that means Palace of the Sun. The earliest evidence of humans using the oasis dates back to the Roman Empire, when a military outpost called Ad Speculum was built there in 30 AD and remained until the year 640. This outpost was of a much larger network of Roman encampments across northern Africa called the Saharan Lines, which shored up the empire's southern border and gave advance warning of any dangers approaching from further south. After the Romans left, the oasis was used for a time as a mountain refuge for the Berber people, and it's now been the site of a village called Chabika, which has around three to 400 residents in it. It is such a scenic place that it's been featured in a number of films, most prominently in The English Patient, and it remains an important resting point for nomadic tribes that live up in the mountains. Number 6. Tamaya Oasis, Niger Tamaya is an oasis and a small town that's located in the Ayur Mountains in the Agadez region of Niger, in an area that's normally thought of as being covered by the Saharan Desert and an extremely difficult environment to survive in. The oasis, though, is a welcome respite from the heat of the desert and the cold of the mountains, so much so that it currently hosts a population of around 14,000 people. Made up of a thick canopy of citrus and palm trees, it's a popular destination during parts of the year because of the seasonal waterfalls that develop, and it's also a place where you can see signs of Niger's troubled past, with the remains of a French fort that once stood there and acted as one of France's most important outposts in that region of the country in order to prevent an uprising. Now it's home to a predominantly agricultural community, which is particularly known for its fruit production. Guests can savor the pomegranates and oranges, which, because of the climate, are said to be some of the best in the world. Number 5. Huacachina, Peru The village of Huacachina is a beautiful community that's around three miles from the city of Ica in southwestern Peru that's built around its very own oasis. With a name that translates to mean Hidden Lagoon, it has a permanent population of around 100 people. But because of its stunning location, it welcomes tens of thousands of tourists each year. The desert lake itself is often called the Oasis of America and has for a long time been part of local beliefs and said to contain therapeutic waters. According to legend, it's where a princess had once gone to bathe, but after noticing a hunter coming close, she fled and left her mirror behind, which turned the small pool of water into a lake. It's said that she still lives there as a mermaid and can be seen from some evenings during a full moon. But even the magic that surrounds the place doesn't appear to be saving it from its gradual decline. It was discovered that the lake actually is fed by water that seeps out from subterranean aquifers, but then an increased number of wells in the area that have been drilled to access that water has meant the lake has begun to shrink. To overcome this, local businesses have been pumping water directly into the oasis to preserve it since 2015, and a larger, more permanent solution is currently being developed to hopefully preserve the lagoon forever. Number 4. Crescent Moon Lake, China Around 3.7 miles to the south of the city of Donhuang is the Gansu province of China, which is a desert oasis as well as providing much-needed water and respite to those who travel past for centuries. It has a pretty unusual shape. It's clearly visible from the peaks of the surrounding dunes. The water has been formed in the shape of a crescent moon, and with a series of traditional buildings and the surrounding vegetation, it's long been written about as being one of the most entrancing places in all of China. 
In recent times, it's become popular not just with nomads, but with tourists too. But as with many other desert lagoons, this one also appears to be shrinking. A survey that was conducted in 1960 found that the lake had an average depth of around 16 feet, with a maximum depth of 25 feet. But in the following 40 years, it had lost so much water that it was just three feet deep. Quite why this has happened isn't entirely clear, but it's most likely due to drilling and development works elsewhere that had affected the water table in the region. In an effort to maintain the lake, the government has begun a program of refilling it and planning a project to actively divert groundwater to permanently restore the water level and restore it to its former glory. Number 3. Siwa Oasis, Egypt Deep within Egypt's western desert, around 348 miles from Cairo and 30 miles from the border with Libya, is a small settlement called the Siwa Oasis. It is one of the most isolated places in the whole country, and its 30,000 residents are completely detached and have their completely unique culture, customs, and language. Despite its isolation, Siwa is a popular destination because of its rich culture and history, and of course, the 50-mile-long oasis that's built around it. The oasis itself is within a depression that's up to 62 feet below sea level and is made up of over 300,000 palm trees, 70,000 olive trees, a large central lake, and more than 300 freshwater springs. It's also a place of significant historical importance and during the times of the ancient Egyptians was called the Oasis of Amun-Ra. Once a prestigious oracle lived there and the associated temple ruins and other structures remain accessible to this day. There's now a tarmac road that leads from the oasis to the Mediterranean coast, but this was only built in the 1980s, and before then, the only way to reach it was by a multi-day camel trek. The region's main product are dates and olives, which are exported to support the local economy, and in recent decades, it's become highly reliant on tourist revenue, too. Number 2. Abraham's Oasis, Iraq the Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq was, during Operation Iraqi Freedom, the second largest U.S. air base in the country. Originally an Iraqi base that had been established in the mid-1980s, one of the more unusual things about its location was that on its western edge, there's a valley with a stunning oasis inside of it. Positioned around 100 miles to the west of Baghdad, the oasis has long been known as Abraham's Well because it was believed to be the location of the place from the Bible. But even though this idea has since been disproved, it remains historically and culturally significant to Iraqis. For centuries, it had been where traveling Bedouins would have stopped during their journey, but it was only in the 1920s that it was permanently inhabited when a small village was built to support the farmers growing date palms. Even with the subsequent construction of the military base, the oasis remained home to around 70 species of birds and various other animals as well as 20 different types of dates from the palm groves that still thrive there. While the base was used by U.S. forces, they ensured that they didn't cause any damage to the region by removing trash and not expanding structures into it, and it also provided a welcome distraction for troops who had spent so much time in the hot, arid desert that they were able to relax in the oasis the same way that Bedouins did hundreds of years before them. Number 1. Ubari Oasis, Libya Set within Idehan Ubari, which is a section of Libyan territory that's in the Sahara Desert, the small oasis town of Ubari is a welcome sight amongst the vast sandy dunes around it. This whole region historically been the domain of the Tauareg people, a nomadic Berber group who lived throughout the Sahara across a large range that reaches into Algeria, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. Sometimes known as the Blue People because of the way they use indigo dye in their clothes that stain their skin, they've developed techniques to allow them to survive in hostile conditions in a way that very few others can. One of these methods involved establishing small, permanent communities around oases to provide support to those that were passing by, and that's why the town at Ubari was first established. It's within the Targa Valley and has lakes that are fed by natural springs which support wetland grasses and palm groves. This oasis has been particularly important for local communities because the region is one of the sunniest and driest places on Earth, with an average annual rainfall of just a third of an inch, or about eight millimeters. There's nowhere near enough water being provided from the sky to survive. So with temperatures averaging 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius during summer months, natural underground springs are the only alternative. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.